Welcome to TSRA 2A Ricochet. Your host is Andy Turner, the Legislative Director Podcast of the Texas State Rifle Association. We'll discuss your 2A rights, legislation, hunting, competition, you name it. Join in and be part of the discussion. Now here's your host, Andy Turner. And welcome to TSRA 2A Ricochet. I am your host and legislative director for the Texas State Rifle Association, Andy Turner. And this is my friend Eric, whose last name we will not disclose <laughs> so that one of us can have some privacy. Um, I don't care about being public, but other people, like my husband, feel very strongly. Not my husband. My husband's in the other room. Um, anyway, uh, so this is the rough draft. So it's going to be a little bumpy and we're going to figure out camera angles and this and that and the other thing. So bear with us. And when you send us your comments, be gentle, but be, you know, clear. Um, so, uh, Eric, I don't know if you know, but I have three kids. Um, my oldest one just got married. Well, you do know this. My oldest one just got married a week ago, Saturday. Um, so up in Maryland and it was lovely and my baby girl is, um, is a sophomore at York College of Pennsylvania, just so people know who I am a little bit. And, um, and it was my dad who literally put a 22 rifle in my hand when I was, I don't know, like seven, six, seven years old on the back porch of my aunt, aunt Elaine's, uh, uh, cabin in Pennsylvania. And uh, taught taught me like the very basics, like the very most basic things about shooting. And um, so I've been uh, so I've been shooting in one form or another really most of my life. And um, so you know I got a little older and uh, mo moved around a little bit. And then uh, Dad said, "Well, do you want to go hunting?" And I was like, "Well, yeah." <laughs> because geese in Maryland are a thing and deer are always a thing no matter what state you're in. So um, we, we went and I loved it. He handed me the, uh, the, the knife and the axe and um, said, okay, so you can do this or I will do this for you one time. And I looked at him and said, Daddy, I will never remember how to do this if I don't do it myself. So he walked me through it and we smoked because at the time I was smoking cigars. And we smoked cigars while we were cleaning the deer and we had a great time. And it was, it was, that first time was, I mean, it's, it's like no other. And Daddy and I have been hunting, well, we had been hunting for a long time after that. But um, so uh, when my baby girl got um, of school age, then I was looking around for something to do. I had left teaching to stay home with her and, and then the boys who came after that. And um, they, um, uh, what was I going to say? The boys. Oh, and so I got involved with um, the Republican women and ended up <laughs> summing this way up. I ended up being the chairman of the Maryland State Rifle and Pistol Association before we moved to Texas. And I was there for, I don't know, a couple of years, whatever it was. Um, when I left, I told my favorite Marine, you're taking over. <laughs> so um, he and my friend Jeff are running the MSRPA, and I am down here, and I was delighted to be uh, a part of uh, my, my very first Texas session was this past session when we got all those great bills through. And um, I was, I mean, it was just like a different world Wasn't for me. That so great? It really was like, you know, one of the first weeks we were, were living in this house, um, Peter and I were sitting on the back deck and I was, you know, listening to the, the gunshots in the background and somebody put up on Facebook, does anybody hear those gunshots? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's the sound of freedom. <laughs> oh, but the rest of y'all, but I live in the country. So, um, you know, and then I got like five likes instantaneously from the neighbors, which was, fu which was funny. So, um, that's a little bit about who, who I am. I know you, this is redundant for you, but, um... Tell me, tell peeps about your 2A self. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on your show today. Thank God, thank and, you for uh, coming. <laughs> always a pleasure. Um, well, I've always uh, been involved in f firearm, you know, fun from the very beginning, uh, about 10 years old. Uh, I got a chance to shoot tin cans and bottles at my grandfather's house. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I remember going home 
afterwards, and mom and dad were like, why is your shoulder so sore? Oh, yeah, because of the recoil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but that was the first time, and then after that, of course, my dad has always been, uh, you know, an avid two-way supporter as well. Oh, good. And, um, well, he's a vet. Yes. And he's, he's thank him. Vet. Thank him for us on behalf of on behalf of all of us for his service because it's an important thing. And you know, I, I write I wrote about that in the November issue of the magazine, so you'll you'll read that. <laughs> and so um, you know, I always had uh, target practice with my dad all my life growing up, um, and then it kind of just kind of fell off for a little while. Um, and then about in my mid thirties, I started getting back into uh, playing with firearms again, going to the range, shooting, practicing, getting a little better. Um, and it wasn't until a few years ago um, that my wife and I, we joined uh, the safety team at our church. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always been nice to uh, you know that you're uh, you know, keeping a watchful eye and, 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 and helping protect others. Um, and I've just, you know, over the years realized how important our uh, two-way rights are in America. Mm -hmm. um, and so a couple of years ago, I started uh, getting more involved in writing my legislators, writing the governor, uh, letting them know what we thought about uh, wanting constitutional carry, right. wanting Second Amendment sanctuary. Uh, so I start talking to my friends and letting them know what I'm doing and uh, how important it is. And, mm -hmm. You know, that group of friends that I, you know, yeah. run with, and they feel the same way. And they all come running to you for information, because the first time we met, you were like, I know who you are, and I was like, you do? <laughs> like I said, you know, when we first met, I was like, you know, you're sort of like a hero in the circles that I run. I, so. I don't know, I'm a hero, but I, I love what I do, though, so it's it's easy, it's easy, like, you know, I mean, and, and I know, and and who you can't see off screen is, is his lovely wife, whose name I won't mention, because she didn't give me permission, but you both love what you do for a living, and if you love what you do, I had a friend in Maryland who used to be the chairman of the Republican Party for the state. She said, if you love what you do for a living, you will never work a day in your life. Absolutely. And I don't feel like, I mean, there was a little work going into putting up this podcast this afternoon. <laughs> that was kind of work. Just a little bit. Just a little. But, but otherwise, like, this is not, this is not work for me. It's just fun. Yeah. And I enjoy it, and I enjoy the debate, and, and, you know, it's you know some people can't stand it but I, I love it oh yeah so and getting involved is so key and that's why you know we really appreciate groups like TSRA and for uh, going forth you know and fighting the battles you know and, and well, you're a member too so helping us make our voices heard yeah um, you know we we really did accomplish a lot this year and really did started, so we really did it was very nice and just you know to keep writing Keep calling. Yeah, and making those phone calls. And by the way, I would be remiss at this point if I didn't say, if you are not on my email, um, please put, uh, please go to TSRA PAC, Political Action Committee, TSRAPAC.com and sign up for my emails. They are written by me. If you hit reply to, they come to my email box, not anybody else's, not some random in inbox. And I will respond. And even if we disagree on something, I will still respond. More than likely, I'll call you if we disagree because I want to hear. There's there certain things that get lost. You ever notice that you that get lost in in text context? Oh yeah. So I and then so I did it, did that with a few people over session who were not fans of permitless carry, and not, not there weren't a lot of people, but there were some and. Um, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Just, just briefly, we'll we'll visit permitless carry in another episode because um, this is just, you know, a taste. Um, anything else you want you wanted to add before I go on to the rest of this stuff? No. You sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so TSRA is, as I said, the Texas State Rifle Association. We have a director for everything. If you want to shoot shotgun, if you want to shoot clays, if you want to go hunting, if you want to participate in the civilian marksmanship program, I mean, we have, we have all the directors. So um, do reach out to me. You can always reach me at Andy, A-N-D-I, Turner, T-U-R-N-E-R, -E at TSRA.com, or better yet, just subscribe to my emails, and then you can hit reply, and it's no big deal. Um, so what we're going to do on 2A Ricochet is we're going to look at Texas issues, Texas 2A issues first, and then we are going to um, 
Uh, we're going to talk about those, and when there either aren't any or when we're done with those issues, then we'll move on to federal stuff. And right now, it well, like we're dealing with the NDAA, which I have to make some calls on and find out a little bit more about because I have some concerns. Um, but anyway, so we'll be talking about all that, and later on, as we get rolling with the show a little more consistent, we'll be talking about um, something else that many shooters enjoy, which is scotch and bourbon. And and as a former back in great in, in undergraduate school and graduate school, I bartended my way through. So I you'll usually get the hey, this is what we're drinking tonight, um, or what I'm drinking, or what we're drinking, or whatever. So, um, but uh, yeah, so yes. That, let's see. Um, the inaugural episode will be available on the TSRA PAC website, tsrapac.com. It will be available on the YouTube channel for the PAC. Um, and our other Eric, mm -hmm. the always famous, uh, fabulous other Eric up north, is um, going to e edit. And he's not giving me permission to use his last name, so I'm not using his last name. Um, basically, I didn't ask. Um, didn't really ask you either, so... Um, so uh, anyway, he's going to edit this and he's going to pull the audio off and then upload it so you guys can listen to this as a podcast or if you want to go to YouTube and watch the video, if you just want to go to the website and watch the video, you can do that. Um, you will not, not lose anything other than my gesticulating by listening to the, to the podcast. Um, so there'll be more information as soon as we figure out how um, the Buzzsprout works, which is the medium for podcasting. Um, so, uh, what we need to know, what Eric and I need to know going forward is, is there anything in particular on your mind and whether that's, Hey, yes, I wanted to talk. I want them to talk about this stuff right now. Or as we go along, you know, Hey, this is topical and send me a link to an article or send me a, send me a, just send me an email and, um, chances are good. You'll get an email back and we'll have my cell phone on it. You can text me. It's all good. Um, but yeah, definitely we want to know what you're thinking and what you care about. And, um, you know, so that's, that's pretty much what the show is going to be. It's going to be all things TSRA, but it's going to be Texas based. And then if we run out of material, um, we will move on to the feds. So, um, and then, um, that's really, that's really it for what we're doing. But because I'm just that girl. I ran across two articles today, one um, from Bloomberg, by the way. I thought that was interesting, this finance one. So uh, uh, Representative Holland um, passed a bill called 2A Sanctuary State this year. And we'll get into this way more, but I just want to talk about this really quickly. J.P. Morgan, Chase, and company, and I think it's not just J.P. Morgan um, and Chase. I think Citibank's involved, too. Uh, Bank of America. Yeah, they're very unhappy with the state of Texas for passing this bill because they can't do business. They can't do municipal bonds with the state because they have they they are discriminated. They have a policy of not doing business with FFLs. And Texas uh, legislature said, oh, no, no, no. We're not giving taxpayer money to anybody that discriminates against 2A. We don't give money to people who discriminate against you based on your gender or your skin color or your hair color or whatever. Why would we, if you're anti if you're unconstitutional, if you act against the Constitution, why would we give you more, more money? Exactly. So uh, I thought that was really interesting, and I'm really kind of happy that they're whining about it because darn. Um, so what did you think of that art? I know I gave it to you right before we went on the air. Do you have any thoughts? I mean, you know, they're just going to have to learn that, uh, you know, especially when they do business in states that are pro two way, they're going to, they're going to be pushed out if they don't, uh, agree to stop being so discriminatory. I agree. And, uh, but it also gives other businesses the opportunity to say, we're going to jump in the hole. Out. Yeah. So. I mean, it could be good all the way around. Uh, yep. You know, we don't need monopolized, you know, banks and stuff like that that are coming in saying, hey, you're going to play by our rules or nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in some other players. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I agree. And this, this gives 
also gives smaller businesses an opportunity, smaller banks an opportunity. Now, I don't know a whole lot about selling municipal bonds to counties and stuff, and I, I know about this much. <laughs> but and, and I imagine it's quite the thing, but, you know, maybe this gives them an opportunity to, to stick their big toe in the water. Yeah. Um, but certainly there are other big banks that would be happy to do business with the state of Texas. So Absolutely. So, and then uh, this one came from our, um, our lovely NRA lobbyist, Tara, uh, came in my mail today, um, which I totally, I don't know how I missed it. I literally Google 2A in Texas every day in various forms of it mm. and to make sure I'm not missing anything. And uh, apparently the Houston, it's the, I'm sorry, it's AB3, ABC 13 out of, um, out of Houston. Um, and they have, they have a um, comment on the permitless carry and what, and what the, um, uh, Thursday, ABC 13 caught up with, uh, with uh, wait, I'm trying to find his name, ah, firearms instructor Darius Sanders and, uh, and, and former special office, former special, former army special forces member, Eric Gray, co-founder of Gray B Solutions. And I I'm reading from the article here, uh, which is available online. Um, and he says, education, education, education. It's great to be able to carry that gun in your, in your purse. Great to be able to carry it in your pocket, but at the same token, if you don't understand the weapons system or understand the legality of it, you don't understand the totality of circumstances. You can't just pull out a gun and start shooting. That's absolutely correct. But the really great takeaway um, from this article, and I've lost the quote, but the FFF, I mean, not the FFL, the, um, the uh, firearms instructor, here it is, um, he says, since September 1, since permitless carry went into effect, I've had a slight decrease in the LTC interest. However, I've had a big increase in handgun training. And you know what? That's And then it's followed by this um, special forces quote about education. And I couldn't agree more. You, just because we have permitless carry, you know, first of all, I said this all along, right? I, I didn't, fully didn't think that people were just going to be like, oh, well, I can carry now. I've never, I've never handled a handgun in my life. I'm going to run right out to my FFL and go buy my first handgun. People, it's not going to happen, right? And for first-time gun owners, you know, they they realize. And I, how many times did I say this at recession? It's like a chainsaw, right? It's like you know, chainsaws are so dangerous they make movies about it. <laughs> I found out Matthew McConaughey was one, one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies today. Oh really? I had no idea. I didn't either. I didn't either. So anyway, um, and that is by no means an endorsement of anybody who may or may not be running. I'll do those after everybody's filed. Um, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, so, I mean, they're dangerous, right? They're dangerous. So you don't pick up a chainsaw. You don't go to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. Pick up a chainsaw, bring it back, and open the box and just pull the chain. You read the manual. You may ask your buddy for advice. Maybe they come over. He might look at a YouTube video. Something. Something. Because you could lose an entire limb, or with a gun, you know, die. You could die either way. So people don't generally do that. People are not, I mean, there are, yes, stupid people. But we don't, thankfully in Texas, we do not have a lot of them. <laughs> so um, anyway, so those were the two news articles that I wanted to bring. The name of the article is, um, on ABC 13, if anybody wants to look it up, is Gun Training Trends in Houston After Permit Permitless Carry Bill Passes. Um, and it is dated September 30th. That is not today's date. Um, but um, And it, would, it went up at like 9 o'clock. So uh, Erica Simon is the reporter. Um, so if you want to see it for yourself. But I thought it was incredibly encouraging. Absolutely. It's good to see that people are willing to get the training and that they're seeking out the training. Yeah. Uh, which goes completely against the narrative of what everybody thought was going to happen. Right. They thought that, well, since you're getting rid of... Uh, There's going to be blood in the stuff, streets, but where did we hear that before? Yeah, we're going to have high noon at the OK Corral, and but it didn't happen September 1st came, nothing happens. And it didn't happen when they did concealed handgun licenses, and they swore up and down there'd be blood in the streets, and when they allowed open carry... They said there'd be, you know, and so I, we talked about this a lot during session, and I know you and I met towards the end of session, but um, 
but yeah, we talked about this a lot. Um, the members would email me and call me and stuff, and and everybody, most people were like, yes, because I think they inherently understood. But some people, you know, had some concerns, and I tried to. I don't try to change anybody's mind about anything in terms of membership because you feel how you feel, and your opinions are very hard won. But if I can give you information that would make you feel better about the bill, like you still may not like the bill, and you do you, boo-boo, but you may not like the bill, but at least you can go, okay, it's not quite as dangerous as I thought it was. Right. So, um, and I was successful with that. I actually turned one guy who's a doctor um, and turned him completely around. And he was like, and I was like, so do you feel, be-? like at the end of the conversation, I was like, so do you feel better about this? And he was like, he was like, oh no, I'm fully on board. This is great. So, um, and I was like, wow, okay, that was incredibly effective. <laughs> so, um, and that is one of the, my favorite things to do is to talk to members. So I, I just truly love sitting on the phone and talking to them, finding out how they feel and the set and the other things. So. Most people fear what they don't understand. I, I had a client that I talked to not too long ago that swore that, oh, well, if we have permitless carry. The criminals are going to be running around with guns. And I said, are They are serious? now. You don't think they're doing it already? <laughs> That's why they're criminals. And then she stopped and she thought for a second, Oh, you know what? You're right. So, I mean, it's just getting people to think. Yeah. yeah. And just information, yeah. right? Because yeah. people, you're right, people fear what they don't know. People hate what they don't know about, right? And if they're afraid of something or someone, if they're afraid, then it leads to hate, and that's that's the whole problem with so many things. But story for another day. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna conclude by reminding everybody that we will be on tsrapack.com. We will be on tsrapack at the YouTube channel, and then we will be uh, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Um, by the time you see this, um, because we're gonna edit it up and um, a little bit, and uh, we hope to make we hope to make this weekly. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll give it our best shot and, uh, it'll be especially important when we do this during, during legislative season, but with the elections coming up and stuff, I thought this was a good time to, to get this rolling. So when the elections come around and there's all the issues of the day, we can do this. And by then we'll have all the kinks worked out <laughs> and poor Eric won't have to come in and wait for me to like trip over myself 17 times. But anyway, thank you all for um, uh, viewing the first rough draft. Hopefully this will be the only rough draft of uh, TSRA Ricochet. I am Andy Turner and my fabulous co-host, Eric. Um, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks. You've been listening to TSRA 2A Ricochet with your host, Andy Turner the Legislative Director Podcast of the Texas State Rifle Association. And until next time, you can find out more at TSRAPAC.com and TSRA.com. Ah!